Welcome to Math in a Box with Susan Johnsey. This is my second video on quadratic inequalities. I'm going to work the same two problems that I had worked in an earlier video, but I'm going to use a little bit different method. This one has more of a visual to help students that might be struggling, or the other video has more to do with their logic and ability to uh, understand greater than and less than symbols. And in this one, I'm going to use um, a little diagrams, uh, boxes that will help uh, you see or visually um, think about these problems. Let's take a look now. Uh, the uh, fourth, the five things that you must know are still the same. You must understand how to solve inequalities, factor polynomials, solve quadratic equations. You must understand the word uh, and and or for math statements and you must know the multiply rules for real numbers. Now you probably know number five. You've known that one quite a while, but you really have to know these other four, um, excuse me, you really have to know these other skills before you begin to understand quadratic inequalities. Let's take a look at the first one. 2x squared minus 7x minus 4 is greater than 0. If something is greater than 0, then it must be positive. So this expression that we have, 2x squared minus 7x minus 4, is an expression that must be positive. We must find all the x values that will make it positive. We're going to factor this, 2x and then an x here. And that will, we need a negative 4, that would be here. And a plus 1, I'm not really teaching you how to do the factoring, that is step 2 that I mentioned over here. So you need to go back and perhaps watch another video of mine if you don't understand factoring. And that is greater than 0. Again, that means that this has to be positive. Now we're multiplying two things together. When you multiply two things together and you want a positive answer, then you would have to have a negative times a negative or, see my use of or here, and this really had an and between them. Uh, you would have to have a positive times another positive. You must have both of those, meaning that one and and between them, because and statements, I forgot to mention that, just as a reminder, and statements in math, when you separate something with an and, both statements have to be true. If you separate two statements with an or in math, then only one of them has to be true. Now both of them can be, but at least one has to be true. Uh, with an and, you are required to have both statements true. So I have to have two negatives, or I can have two positives. All right, now let's look at that. We're going to take 2x plus 1, the first factor, and we're going to find out where it equals 0. It equals 0 if x is a negative 1 half. All right, so let's put negative 1 half. I'll say 0 is here, so I'll just say negative 1 half is about right there. Okay. Now, let's take the other factor. x minus 4, where does it equal 0? Well, it equals 0 if x is a 4. Now, I need my number lines to line up, so I will put the 0 in the same place. And remember that uh, your negative numbers, of course, would be to the left of the 0, and the 4 would be somewhere over here to the right. I'll just mark it here. That's our 4. But if I mark 4 here now, that does mean the 4 is up here on the other one. But we don't want to put too many numbers. It gets confusing if you do. All right, now then, we let's go back to the first factor. We know where it is equal to 0. Oops, I forgot the 2 there. If x is a negative 1 half. But my question to you is, where is it negative? And where is it positive? That's what we really want to know. Well, the negative 1 half is where it equals 0. Try some numbers to the right of the negative 1 half. What was the number to the right of 1 half? Well, 0 is. If I use a 0 here, what's 2 times 0? Zero? 0, what's 0 plus 1? 0 plus 1 is 1. So if I use this, I got a positive 1. So I'm going to put a plus over here. Because if I let x be a 0, 
this expression gives me a positive number. And remember, we really just need to know where these factors are positive and negative. All right, what about if I check out, say, 1? One? 1 is over this way also. If I use a 1 in this factor, 2x plus 1, I again will get a positive number. So I think you will see that all the numbers to the right of the negative 1 half on the number line will give me positives. So just write several positives. Now try a number to the left of the negative 1 half. What's a number to the left? Hmm, say negative 1. If I put a negative 1 here, that's 2 times a negative 1. That's negative 2. What's negative 2 plus 1? Well, it happens to be negative 1. I really don't care what number. I just need to know the sign. The sign is negative. So let's put a big negative sign here. All right, let's try something else. You want to try negative 3? If you use a negative 3, that will give me negative 6 plus 1. And again, I'm going to get a negative answer. So it looks like all the numbers to the left of the negative one-half are negative, and all the numbers to the right. And that's what you're going to find. They do not mix together. All the positives will be on one side and all the negatives on the other. Now, it's not always that the positives are on the right, but your book will do that a whole lot. But there's really just as many problems where the positives are to the left. It's just that the books seem to like the ones they have positives on the right. I always like to mention that because I don't want you to just automatically put the pluses on the right side. They can be on the left. All right, let's try this now with a 4. Remember, x equals 4. For the second factor, let's take numbers to the right of the 4, and you should get all positives. For example, you can try 5. If you put a 5, 5 minus 4 is 1. Or if you try 6, 6 minus 4 is 2. I'm getting positive numbers. And anything to the left of the 4 will be negative. All right, now, what we do now is, uh, what we do now is draw vertical lines where that 0 we found. We found that this first factor was 0 at negative 1 half. Or you can think, oh, that's where the negatives and the positives changed. It went from a negative to positive. So draw a vertical line. You're going to draw it all the way through both number lines. Now do the same thing with the other one. Remember this equaled 0 if x was a 4 or that's where the positives and negatives changed. So draw a vertical line all the way through. And now we're ready to find the answers. Remember we wanted a negative times a negative. Look in this area here. We have a negative and we have negatives. So for x less than negative 1 half, this area here, we have a negative times a negative. And that's one of the things we needed. So this would be OK. This area here is OK. We want that area. That's x is less than the negative 1 half. All right, now let's go to the next area. We actually have three areas or regions to test out. Let's look here. We have a negative times a positive. Positive times a negative, however you'd like to say it. But that gives you a negative answer when you multiply a positive times a negative. And remember, we didn't want a negative answer. We wanted a positive answer. Or if you look at this line, we wrote a negative times a negative, positive times a positive. We don't have that here, so this one is no. We do not want this interval. We do not want the numbers here. And again, in the third region, we test this. A positive times a positive. That is going to give us a positive answer. So this one is OK. So we have two regions that are OK and one region that's not. X is greater than 4. We want both of these regions, so we will put an OR between these. And this is considered inequality notation. To write this as a with uh, interval notation, you want to use infinity. So you begin with negative infinity, and that will go all the way up to the negative 1 half. OR, uh, the OR is has a symbol. It's the up 
uh, the U shape here, so you can write the word or, you can put a U, and then the interval for the second part, for the second region, begins at 4, and will go all the way to positive infinity. So this is called interval notation. Some teachers or schools require that, and some require this, the inequality notation. I paused the video for a few seconds to clean up the screen. Let's look at the second problem that I have written up here. Notice that it is in factored form already for us and that we have the zero on the right side. You must really have both of these. This was studied uh, back when solving quadratic equations. You must have the zero and you must have these in factored form. Now, in order to get something to be negative, which which is what we have here, less than zero, or we want uh, it equal to zero, what do we need? We are multiplying two things together here. Well, we would need a positive number multiplied times a negative. Or we could have a negative multiplied times a positive. That's supposed to mean multiply right there. All right, so let's look at uh, our factors, 3x minus 2. Let's draw the number line for it. We need to know where this will equal 0. This will equal 0 if x equals 2 thirds. So draw a number line. And let's remember we're going to mark 0. And uh, then we will mark the number that we need to make this factor equals 0. That's 2 thirds. That's positive. I'm just going to mark it over here to the right of the 0. 2 thirds. Now let's look at the other factor. That's x plus 4. And where does that equal 0? It equals 0 if x is a negative 4. Alright, now we're going to draw a number line. And we need to keep these lined up. I'll put the 0 at the same place. This factor equals 0 if x is a negative 4. Negative 4 would be over to the left of the 0. All right. Now remember we need to know where actually these factors are positive and where they are negative. Not just where they are 0, but where they are positive and negative. And this is where we just chose some numbers and uh, tried them out. 2 thirds. What's over in this area? What's to the right of a 2 thirds? Well, 1 definitely is, or 2, or 3, or 4. Just pick any number to the, did I say left, I meant right, of the 2 thirds. The 2 thirds, I'm going to choose 2. If I put a 2 here for the x, we have 3 times 2 is 6. 6 minus 2 is 4. So if I use the 2, I will get a positive 4. But we just need to note that we got a positive number. I'm going to put a plus over here. All right, if I try another number over here to the right of the 2 thirds, say for example 10. If I put a 10 here, that becomes very large. You get positive 28. So as you can see, all numbers are going to be positive to the right of the 2 thirds. Now you really write, need to write several positives. Now that should mean that any number that I choose to the left will give me a negative. Let's try the 0. If I put a 0 in for the x, I get 3 times 0 is 0. 0 minus 2 is a negative 2. So here at 0, I did get a negative value. Try another number that's to the left of 2 thirds. For example, negative 1. Uh, and you'll see that you're going to get all negatives anytime we try something to the left of the 2 thirds. All right, now let's go to the negative 4. Uh, again, I'm going to just take numbers randomly to the right of the negative 4 and substitute them in and you should get all positives. Now remember I warned you in another video if you watched it or perhaps you didn't that uh, don't assume that the positives are always to the right. Uh, the books uh, do like to make up problems that are always where the positives will always be to the right but the positives can be on the left. They really can. There's just as many problems where they are on the left and therefore the negatives would be on the right. Alright, we have our positives and negatives for each factor. 
You see, this method is really good if you have several factors. Uh, I have only two, but if I had three factors up here, then I would just draw a third number line and would have to think more about the multiplication that I'm going to do. But this method works very well if you have several factors. So I'm drawing the vertical lines. You draw the vertical lines at the negative 4 and at the 2 thirds, and you draw them all the way through both number lines. And now we're ready to test. Remember that we wanted a negative or a 0. Now we will get a 0 at negative 4 and at 2 thirds. So we know the zeros, negative 4 and 2 thirds, but we need to know where we will get a negative. Now let's look in the first region, a negative times a negative. A negative times a negative is a positive. So this is not what we want. We do not want a positive. A negative times a positive in the second region. A negative times a positive is going to give you a negative answer. So this one is OK. We want that. Over in the third region, we have a positive times a positive, And again, that is no. So our answer is just one region this time. We have only one region, and we'll have to be careful how we write the notation here. This is going to be an x. It must be less than or equal to 2 thirds, but it must be greater than the negative 4. We have to stay above the negative 4. Now, you notice how I'm writing this. You read it kind of backwards. The x, and notice that the alligator's mouth is opening towards the x, so the x is greater than or equal to negative 4. If you've not re uh, read those backwards before, it's a little tricky the first time. But this says that x must be less than or equal to 2 thirds, but it also says if you start here and read backwards, x is greater than or equal to negative 4. Now this is the inequality notation. The interval notation would be simply a brace or a rest. I forgot it's a brace or a bracket. Um, anyway, you use this symbol when you want to include the negative 4. So we put a negative 4, comma, and then we use the 2 thirds. And we also want to include the 2 thirds. That's because we have equals on both of these. And you use this symbol to mean that you want to include those. There's our solution for two quadratic inequalities. This is Susan Johnson with MathInABox.com. I hope this has helped you today. And remember, if you have a problem that has more than two factors, this method is uh, much easier to, to use than the first one that I presented earlier in another video. I presented both methods because you'll see both methods presented in uh, your classrooms, in your high school classrooms.